Most of you aren't subscribed. Make sure to subscribe, as it helps out the channel. Without further ado, the series opens with two high school students, Student Council President Suzume Inakami, and her Vice President, Kazuki Ryuzen. Walking through the school halls as various students adore and imagine if Suzume and Kazuki dated. At the same time, our MC, Ken Yusato, an ordinary student, helps out around the school, noting how unfair the world can be sometimes. As school begins to wrap up for the day, it suddenly starts raining, forcing Yusato to return to his lockers in search of his umbrella to head home. Unfortunately, someone must have stolen his umbrella, but upon spotting someone else's umbrella, Yusato wonders if he should use that one, but holds himself back, reasoning that he should wait out the rain. With a couple hours flying by, Yusato begins to panic, noting that the rain won't stop anytime soon, but just then Suzume appears, wondering why Yusato is still at school. Upon learning that Yusato doesn't have an umbrella, Yusato gets embarrassed, attempting to leave school without an umbrella, but is suddenly stopped by Kazuki who states that he has a spare umbrella. Surprised that Kazuki would even know who he was, Kazuki states that since they're in the same class, he should at least get to know each other, handing Yusato a spare umbrella. As Kazuki and Suzume prepare to leave school, they invite Yusato to join them on their walk home, surprising Yusato as he's getting a chance to hang out with the most popular students in school. As the three begin chatting, Yusato notes how relieving it is that Kazuki is a kind guy, having always seen him hanging only around girls. Kazuki corrects Yusato, stating that he only chats with girls, because they constantly flock to him, prompting Suzume to tease Kazuki for being a loner when it comes to other boys, as they avoid talking to Kazuki out of jealousy. Firing back, Kazuki points out how unique Suzume is, being the top of her class for grades and athletics, along with being gorgeous. Seeing Suzume and Kazuki bickering, Yusato feels more comfortable around the two, asking if the two are dating. Surprised at Yusato's blunt question, the two reveal that they aren't, and the reason they spend so much time together is because of their student council work. Apologizing for the rude question, Suzume actually thanks Yusato for asking them directly, instead of gossiping and speculating. Changing topics, Suzume asks if Yusato has any goals after graduating, but Yusato states that he hasn't put in much thought. Hearing Kazuki share the same response, Suzume reveals that she too has no idea what to do for the future, as most things she pursues are never a challenge for her. Amazed at how amazing Suzume is, Yusato suddenly notices Kazuki acting weird, asking if Yusato or Suzume had heard any bells ringing. When Yusato steps closer to check on Kazuki, a magic circle suddenly appears below the three, making Kazuki and Yusato wonder if they are dreaming, but when Yusato turns to Suzume, he notes how Suzume is ecstatic at this strange turn of events. Waking up in a strange location, Yusato checks to see Kazuki is fine, but when he turns to Suzume, he's weirded out by her gleeful expression. Just then, a king sitting before them introduces himself as Lloyd Vulgus Linger, ruler of Linger, shocking everyone as they've never seen such a traditional king before. With Suzume growing more and more excited, the king states that he's searching for heroes, revealing that two years ago, the demon king had attacked them. Having been able to temporarily defend against the horde of demons, the king states that he fears the demons have grown stronger, and will be preparing to attack once more. Learning that the king used a forbidden summoning spell to summon them here, Kazuki gets pissed, demanding that they be sent back to their original world. But when the king reveals that the summoning only works one way, Kazuki gets infuriated, forcing the king's knights to raise their weapons. Reading the room, Yusato asks Kazuki to calm down, knowing that they will surely die if they act out. Just then, the king approaches the three, kneeling before them as he promises he'll search for a method to return the heroes. Seeing the king's sincerity, Suzume asks how the king selected them, prompting the king's assistant, Well C, to chime in. Well C states that the summoning spell targets accomplished individuals, and that the heroes should have heard bells ringing before they came here. Surprised to hear this, Yusato notes how he didn't hear any bells, wondering if he was accidentally dragged along. Heading to a different room, Wellsi prepares a crystal orb to gauge the hero's abilities, but whilst this happens, Kazuki and Yusato have a little chat. Apologizing for dragging Yusato into this mess, Yusato reassures Kazuki that it was a complete accident, but seeing Yusato so calm, Kazuki praises Yusato. 
As Suzume excitedly waits for Well C to finish up, Suzume is instructed by Well C to go first, placing her hand on the crystal orb, only for the orb to glow a bright yellow. Well C states that Suzume has a high affinity for lightning alone with a huge mana pool. Next up, Kazuki places his hand on the orb, emitting a bright white light. Well C is amazed, as the light affinity is rare, being very powerful against demons. Finally, with Yusato placing his hand on the crystal orb, a mysterious emerald green light is emitted, which Suzune and Kazuki note as gorgeous, but Well C is clearly terrified. Dragging Yusato back to the throne room, well C reports her findings to the king, happy to report that Suzume and Kazuki are indeed very powerful, but Well C states that the orb turned green for Yusato. With everyone speechless at the news, the king begins to panic, wondering if there is a place to keep Yusato safe, alluding to someone that mustn't find out, but hearing the king freak out, Yusato wonders why everyone is suddenly on edge, only for the throne room doors to burst open. Marching through the throne room, the king is forced to greet Rose, having expected Rose to take the day off, but Rose reminds the king that she serves the king, so she can't take any days off. Stopping in front of Yusato, Rose wonders if Yusato is a hero, but the king quickly chimes in, stating that Yusato is simply an ordinary human. Introducing herself as the captain of the kingdom's rescue team, Rose hears that the heroes are in another room, leaving to greet them. Relieved that Rose didn't discover Yusato's green affinity, the king states that he'll have Yusato rest up for now, but curious as to why everyone is acting so strange, Yusato lets slip that his affinity is a green color, instantly catching Rose's attention, having not left the room yet. Knowing that Yusato is in trouble, the king orders Well C to get Yusato away from Rose, prompting Well C to encase Yusato in a water spell, transporting Yusato as far away from Rose as possible. Sadly, within an instant, Rose had already caught up to Yusato, easily breaking Yusato out of the magic spell, and knocking him out. Having found another healer, Rose tells the king that she'll be taking Yusato and training him, but the king cries that Yusato had been unfairly dragged into this mess. Back with Suzume and Kazuki, they get worried upon learning that Yusato had been taken away to Rose's personal rescue team training facility. Hearing that, Suzume wonders what is so bad about being trained, but Well C utters that Rose's training methods are definitely unorthodox. Cutting to Yusato, he has finally regained consciousness, learning that he wields the rare healing magic affinity, watching as Rose calls for several scary men to enter. Introducing themselves as Tong, Mil, Alec, Gamul and Gerd, Yusato is clearly intimidated by the five men's masculine aura. Kicking Tong aside, Rose orders the men to be less intimidating, revealing the five men are not healers, but there are actually two other healers on the rescue team. Since there is no one else to train him, Rose states that she'll personally train him, asking Tong to share a room with Yusato for the night. With Yusato unable to reject Rose's orders, the five men state that Yusato is screwed, forced to train with Captain Rose, but Yusato notes how he better rest up, fearing what is to come for training the next day. The next morning, Yusato wakes up, hoping everything was a dream, but sadly is forced to accept things as they are. With Tong still asleep, Alec suddenly bursts into Yusato's room, telling Yusato that he's got some guests. Happy to see Suzume and Kazuki, Yusato is clearly dreading the training with Rose, having only heard bad things from the other men. To cheer Yusato up, Suzume states that she'll be cheering him on, as herself and Kazuki also begins training, motivating Yusato to train hard so he can fight alongside Kazuki and Suzume. Seeing Yusato act so cool, Kazuki states that he'll train hard too heading off with Suzume, as Yusato watches his only friends leave. Just then, Rose appears, asking to know if the heroes left. Terrified of Rose, Yusato formally greets and answers Rose's question, but Rose states that Yusato is allowed to do anything he wants, as long as he focuses during training. Handing Yusato a journal, Rose asks Yusato to take down his training every day, as it will help him track his growth and that training will start after breakfast. With the first day of training starting, Yusato notes how easy it is, having been asked to get a sense of the mana flowing through him. Next, Rose hands Yusato a book, asking him to read it, but Yusato states that he doesn't know this world's language. Surprisingly, upon opening the book, Yusato is able to read and understand the book, while Rose states that all heroes have the ability to read and write in this new world's language. Pointing at an image in the book, 
Rose shows the Linger kingdom that they currently are, is right next to the demon territory, explaining why their kingdom is the first to be targeted by demons. As homework, Rose asks Yusato to study the book, as it contains everything one needs to know about this world's nations, races and demons. On day two, Yusato was forced to train his physical state, running endlessly all day. On the third day, the running was amped up, with Rose forcing Yusato to run until he couldn't anymore. As Yusato trips due to fatigue in his legs, Rose simply casts healing magic on his legs, healing the soreness of Yusato's muscles. Rose states that Yusato is to run forever no matter the pain, as she'll simply heal any soreness he has, but Yusato finds this annoying, choosing to write about this in his journal. The next day, Yusato is seen running alongside the other men, but sadly is lapped by all of them. Finding it annoying that Rose is making fun of him for being slow, he chooses to write about it in his journal, instead of saying it to Rose's face. With day 5 and 6, Yusato continues to run all throughout the day and even through rain, but when Yusato trips, he gets really pissed at the training he's being put through, but suddenly notices a green light emanating from his palms. On day 7, Yusato was put through hell, being beaten up all day by Rose, making Yusato wonder if Rose was able to read his journal, but he reasons it's impossible as he wrote in a different language. With the same beating occurring on day 8 and 9, Yusato, once again is suddenly able to manifest two green healing lights on both of his hands, noting how the pain from the beating is suddenly gone. On the tenth day, Yusato notes how he can manifest his healing magic whenever, allowing him to run continuously without any fatigue. Worried that running all day would be wasting time, Yusato suddenly hears Rose screaming for him to add extra laps, holding in his anger as he rushes to finish off the laps. On day 11, Rose had Yusato do push-ups, but as Yusato cycles between push-ups and healing, Rose states that in the midst of a battle, running away from enemies and running to allies will be the most crucial role of a healer. The next two days, Yusato was asked to run in the mornings and perform push-ups during the evening, amazed at how light his body feels, but having caught on, Rose added several weights to add resistance to his training. One day as Yusato was heading to grab his lunch, he had found out that Tong had stolen and ate his lunch, running after him to get revenge, but wondered if this was all Rose's doing. With another week passing, we see Kazuki, Suzume and several others visiting Yusato, but upon reaching Yusato's location, they are shocked at Yusato's training. With a block of concrete and Rose sitting on top of Yusato, Yusato is forced to perform several push-ups, but not wanting Rose to make fun of him, asks Rose to give him more weight. With the help of his healing magic, Yusato manages to perform push-ups with two concrete blocks, impressing Rose, as Yusato is progressing faster than she expected. Seeing Yusato's muscles expand rapidly, Suzume and Kazuki can't help but stare in admiration, but seeing Rose torture Yusato, Siglas the Royal Knight grabs a hold of Rose, demanding that she halt her training. Glaring at Siglas, Rose states that although Siglas has his way of training, Rose states that Yusato is special, as Rose plans to have him be her right-hand man, praising Yusato's unrelenting will to push through adversity. Needing time to speak with Siglas alone, Rose asks Yusato to have lunch with Suzume, Kazuki and Princess Celia. Having found a nice place for a picnic, Yusato learns that Commander Siglas is the kingdom's strongest knight, and has been assigned to teach Suzume and Kazuki sword fighting. Wondering who the princess is, the princess apologizes for the late introduction, introducing herself as Chelly Vulgus Linger, making her the daughter of the king. With the princess asking Yusato to be comfortable around her, she unveils an apple pie that she has brought, pleasing everyone as they enjoy the delectable tastes. Turning to Yusato, Kazuki asks if Yusato's training is as brutal as what they saw, but is surprised to hear that today is one of the lighter days. On the other hand, Kazuki states that himself and Suzume are learning swordplay from Siglas where was well C teaches them magic, a complete contrast to Yusato's brutal training. As Yusato reaches for another slice of pie, Suzume can't help but check out Yusato's new body, amazed at his washboard abs. With a grimmed expression, Kazuki can't help but feel sorry for Yusato, but Yusato reassures everyone that he's grown used to this brutal place, having initially wanted to run away, but as time flew by, Yusato adapted and felt more comfortable. Seeing and hearing that Yusato has grown greatly, Suzume and Kazuki are relieved, but the three are suddenly interrupted by Tong. Having brought Yusato some lunch, 
Yusato only gets pissed to see Tong holding his lunch, prompting the two to get into a little fight. Knowing that they are being left behind, Suzume and Kazuki return to the castle, striving to better themselves just like Yusato. As Yusato sits in a hot tub, he states that he's proud of how his body has become, but wonders if he has the mental capacity to make use of his new body on a battlefield. The next day, Rose and Yusato finally head out, leaving the kingdom and heading to a forest nearby, renowned as the Darkness of Linger. Rose asks Yusato to hunt down a Grand Grizzly, but Yusato gets terrified, reading that Blue Grizzlies turn into Grand Grizzlies only after 100 years. Rose reassures Yusato that he should be strong enough by now to take one on, but having heard enough of Yusato's whining, Rose simply picks Yusato up, tossing him into the middle of the forest. Now flying through the air, Yusato suddenly begins fearing for his life, beginning to free fall into the forest below him. Turning his backpack to face the trees, Yusato begins rapidly healing and repairing his body, ultimately surviving the fall. Knowing that Rose won't let him leave until he slays a Grand Grizzly, Yusato notes how it should be easy to hunt down, having read Grand Grizzlies are only two meters tall, but suddenly a Grand Grizzly appears. Beginning to chase after Yusato, Yusato is forced to flee from the Grand Grizzly, happy to see that his training is paying off. But sadly, the Grand Grizzly is able to keep up with Yusato, forcing Yusato to attempt to stand off against it, but upon spotting two Blue Grizzlies helping the Grand Grizzly, Yusato reasons that he should continue running. Wondering if there is a way out, Yusato suddenly hears water nearby, running through a clearing only to leap into the waterfall, prompting the Grizzlies to turn around and stop chasing. As the sun begins to set, Yusato is seen drying off his clothes and assessing the materials Rose had packed for him, all whilst insulting Rose for being so brutal. Knowing that he'll have to get used to this life, Yusato marks the first day of survival, heading to sleep under some leaves. The next morning, Yusato adds to his tally for days in the forest, beginning to explore and hunt down the whereabouts of the grizzlies. After finding some grizzly markings, Yusato suddenly hears some rustling in a nearby bush, turning to face the sound with his blade. Luckily, an injured rabbit appears, kneeling before Yusato as it seems fatigued. Feeling sorry for the rabbit, Yusato uses healing magic on the rabbit, happy to see the rabbit is all fine now. As Yusato continues to search for the grizzlies, Yusato notices the rabbit following him, but getting an idea, Yusato asks if the rabbit knows where the grizzlies are located. Surprisingly, the rabbit is able to lead Yusato to the grizzly's den, spotting the grand grizzly along with a blue grizzly and its child, amazed as Yusato can now focus on monitoring and preparing to slay the grizzlies. With several days passing, Yusato continues to monitor the grizzlies, leaving to gather river water which Yusato's worried about drinking. Having been several days of watching the grizzlies interact with each other, Yusato begins to adore the grizzlies, happy to see that the rabbit is still visiting him every so often. Sadly, due to drinking too much of the unclean water, Yusato realizes that he's been poisoned, as his healing magic isn't removing the pain. Luckily, the rabbit appears once again, guiding Yusato to some clean drinking water, but before Yusato can thank the rabbit, he notices the rabbit acting strange. Following the rabbit up a tree, Yusato begins scanning the area, only to spot a massive snake circling the forest, shocked as he never read anything about a snake as big as this creature. With four more days passing by, Yusato grows more and more empathy for the adorable grizzlies, but knowing that he can't stay in the forest forever, states that he'll slay the grand grizzly tomorrow. With tomorrow arriving, Yusato notes how annoying it is that it has begun to rain, but Yusato also notices the rabbit tugging against his leg, stopping him from leaving. Believing that the rabbit doesn't want Yusato to get wet, Yusato waits out the rain, only to begin heading towards the grizzlies once the rain has subsided. With a worried rabbit tagging along, Yusato peeks out to locate the grizzlies, only to be shocked that the grand grizzly along with the blue grizzly has been slaughtered. Seeing that bite marks on the grizzlies, Yusato deduces that it must have been the snake, and since the corpses of the grizzlies are still here, the snake must have killed for fun. Just then, Yusato spots the smaller blue grizzly, popping its head out from some stones, having been hiding from the snake. As the small grizzly waddles towards its parent's corpse, Yusato states that he despises those who make others cry, promising to get revenge for the grizzly child. At the same time, we cut to Kazuki and Suzume who have come to visit Yusato, 
but learn that Rose and Yusato have been missing for 10 days, making Kazuki worry, but Suzume states that if Rose is with him, there should be nothing to worry about. Carving a spear out of a branch and fueling up, Yusato asks for the rabbit to lead him to the snake, following along as the rabbit begins hopping through the forest. Upon reaching the snake, Yusato spots the smaller blue grizzly injured, having tried to avenge its parents. Quickly running in to draw the snake's attention, Yusato is surprised by the speed of the snake, barely able to dodge the snake's bite. Seeing an opening, Yusato punctures one of the snake's eyes with his wooden spear, bracing himself with some healing magic, as the snake knocks Yusato to the side. Taking out his blade, Yusato begins dashing towards the snake's blind spot, but having anticipated this, the snake manages to bite onto Yusato's arm with the blade. Pissed that the snake had read his move, Yusato activates his healing magic, gripping his blade tighter, driving his blade deep into the snake's mouth. Screaming in pain, the snake releases Yusato from its grip, but as Yusato steps back to reevaluate the situation, he realizes that he had been poisoned. Having been poisoned from drinking the dirty forest water, Yusato had learned to nullify any poison by healing his body from the inside out, only to rush towards the snake. Spotting the snake preparing to smack Yusato with its tail, the smaller blue grizzly intercepts the strike, allowing Yusato to mount the snake, making it towards the snake's head. With a clean punch to the snake's head, Yusato follows up by puncturing the snake through the head, only to collapse onto the ground. Seeing the smaller blue grizzly waddle towards him, Yusato is grateful that the smaller blue grizzly is alive, apologizing as Yusato is currently trying to remove the snake's poisons from his body. Completely paralyzed and unable to move, Yusato is horrified, spotting the snake slowly getting back up, opening its jaw as it launches towards Yusato. With no other option, Yusato cries for Rose's help, allowing Rose to triumphantly arrive, instantly slaying the snake with a powerful stomp. Happy to see that she made it in time, Rose reveals that the rabbit that was helping Yusato is actually her pet, Kukuru, having been assigned to help Yusato all along. Rose reveals that she had planned to not intervene at all, but upon learning that a snake from the Demon Lord's army was nearby, she had no choice but to intervene. Rose admits that she hadn't planned for this, but the fact that Yusato was able to take on a snake that would normally trouble a unit of elite troops, means that Yusato is growing rapidly. Seeing the smaller blue grizzly trying to protect Yusato, Rose admits that she and Yusato are quite alike, asking if Yusato would like to take the little blue grizzly with them. With the little blue grizzly agreeing to follow Yusato, Rose lifts the little blue grizzly and Yusato out of the forest, congratulating Yusato as he had passed her test with flying colors. As the sun begins to set, Rose states that although Yusato has yet to master the basics, she is impressed that Yusato has the ability to withstand pain and a tough mentality. Rose reveals that the other two healers never was able to earn that praise from Rose, but Rose also mentions that the demon army will be attacking soon but at the same time, we see that the Demon King has ordered one of his commanders, Amila Vergret to begin their attack on the Kingdom of Linger. Back with Rose, she reveals that she and Yusato will be on the front lines healing people, scaring Yusato, as he wonders what Tong and the other boys, along with the two supposed healers will be doing. Rose states that everyone else has different roles, but seeing Yusato nervous, Rose states that they still have some time to train. Cutting to the Demon Lord, he reminds Amelia that he expects good things, but doesn't expect Amelia to fight to the death. As the Demon Lord dismisses Amelia, Amelia cools off elsewhere, only to be teased for being nervous in front of their king, by the demon doctor Hyrulic. As Amelia tries to leave, Hyrulic mentions how he had recently created another demon prototype, offering to show it to Amelia. Unveiling his demon-made monster prototype 72, the Balginok, but Amelia notes how this creature is similar to Prototype 71. Hearing this, Hyrulic mentions how Prototype 71 was wounded by Siglas during their previous battles, ultimately running off into Linger Kingdom's forest. As the two chat, Amelia mentions an annoying human that resides with the human armies, people who solely carry away the injured, known as kidnappers, and their leader Rose, someone Amelia acknowledges as a powerful fighter. Swearing to make her master proud, Amelia is reminded that since she is the leader, she can't fight herself, but Amelia reveals that she'll be sending in the immortal mage of darkness, Black Knight. Back with Yusato, he's happy to be sleeping in a bed, even happy to hear Tong snoring. 
Heading over to his new pet, Yusato brings over some fruit from the cafeteria, handing his grizzly an apple which it deliciously devours. Seeing the grizzly enjoying the apple, Yusato munches on an apple as well, but gets his apple stolen by the grizzly. Happy to see that his pet grizzly is happy, Yusato spots Kukuru, still mad that Kukuru was a spy for Rose. Seeing Kukuru's adorable behavior, Yusato can't help but give in, feeding Kukuru a piece of fruit as well. As his pet grizzly asks for another piece of fruit, Yusato utters his pet grizzly's name, Blurin, but this catches Rose's attention wondering where he got the name. Having combined the word blue and grizzly, Blurin accidentally bites Yusato's hand, but Rose interrupts reporting that she has notified the king about Blurin, so Blurin is now a member of the rescue team as well. Glaring at Blurin, Rose states that Blurin will need to be trained as well, piquing Yusato's interest. Surprisingly, Yusato is ordered to carry Blurin, with Rose stating that Yusato will simulate an actual rescue, where Blurin is an injured soldier. As Yusato begins jogging, he notes how easy this training is, but Rose orders Yusato to speed up, as most injured need to be rushed to safety fast. As Yusato passes by some bush, Yusato is suddenly attacked by Tong and Mill, learning that Rose had instructed them to catch Yusato off guard. Knowing to stay focused, Yusato runs for another hour, but is suddenly attacked by Gamul who had been hiding in the ground, but easily evades Gamul's advances. Next Alec attempts to toss stink bombs to obstruct Yusato's path, but Yusato soldiers along. At the three-hour mark, Yusato is forced to evade some falling logs. At the four-hour mark Yusato is forced to leap and avoid stepping on Kurkuru, but as Yusato continues on his path, he finds himself getting weaker, ultimately collapsing to the ground. Happy to see Blur and okay, Yusato wonders why he suddenly felt so tired, but spots Rose sitting beside him, revealing that humans easily get exhausted when they are nervous, scared or impatient. Realizing that Rose was training his mental fortitude, Rose heals Yusato up, ordering Yusato to rest a bit, but to resume training, this time running through the kingdom. As Yusato works through the town, he notes how much attention he's getting, especially carrying a massive beast like Blurin. Seeing Blurin wake up from his nap, Yusato realizes that Blurin had spotted some of his favorite fruit, stopping by to check them out. Apologizing for not having the money to buy fruit for Blurin, Yusato makes a mental note of the fruit's name, Peffles, a specialty of the Linger Kingdom. Seeing the lady calm about him carrying Blurin, Yusato asks the lady why everyone in town is so calm, learning that his clothing is what rescue team members wear when training. Happy to hear that the others normally run through town as well, Yusato begins to leave, but is stopped and offered a fruit as a gift from the lady. Grateful, Yusato promises to buy things next time, running off, Amako, a young girl appears asking if Yusato was part of the rescue team. As Yusato approaches the center of town, he reasons he should stop by and greet Kasuki and Suzume, wondering if he can convince the guards that Blurin is a huge stuffed toy. At the same time, a man spots Yusato, attempting to run after him, only to trip and catch Yusato's attention. Apologizing for distracting Yusato whilst training, the man reveals that Yusato is his junior, introducing himself as Orga Fleur, another healer on the rescue team. Fleur states that he's surprised that the newest healer is a summoned healer, amazed that Yusato can keep up with Rose's training. Fleur adds that his younger sister, who is five years younger, is the other healer of the rescue team, both operating a clinic to help heal town's folks. Curious as to why Fleur didn't heal himself earlier, Fleur reveals that he can't heal himself as well as he heals others, surprising Yusato, as this explains why Rose said only herself and Yusato will be on the front lines. Yusato learns that Fleur and his sisters are normally in the rear, waiting for Tong and his members to gather the injured, and bring them back to be healed. Hearing this, Yusato wonders if he's capable of standing in the vanguard with Rose, but Fleur reminds Yusato that the heroes and the knights are risking their lives for everyone. Fleur states that Rose is aware of the dangers that the front line has for people, therefore she would never choose someone weak to stand beside and trust, shocking Yusato. Seeing as he needs to get back to the clinic, Fleur states that he has to head back to the clinic, asking Yusato to not hate Rose, as she is clumsy and human just like everyone else. Yusato reassures Fleur that he doesn't hate Rose, resuming his training, but as Yusato leaves, Fleur's sister arrives, Ururu, demanding to know where Fleur has been, but Fleur mentions how he just met a very interesting boy. 
As Usado makes it to the palace gates, he's surprised to be let in with Blurin, hearing that the knights have already heard from Rose that Blurin is to be trusted. As Usado jobs past several knights training, he spots Suzume sparring with multiple knights at once, stopping to greet Usado. Filling Suzume in on how he met Blurin, Usado spots Suzume admiring Blurin's fluffy body, asking if she can touch him. Sadly, Blurin rejects Suzume, prompting Usado to cheer her on, suggesting that Suzume call Blurin's name. Reaching out her hand, Blurin acknowledges Suzume by biting her hand, but as Blurin goes to sleep, Suzume and Usado have a chat. Having not seen Usado in a while, Usado reassures Suzume that his training is going well, but seeing Suzume's calloused hands, Usado rushes to heal Suzume's hand. Embarrassed at Usado's touch, Suzume wonders if Usado specifically came to see her, but Usado states that he also wants to see Kazuki, learning that Kazuki is out right now training. Cutting to Kazuki, we see Kazuki, Siglas and several other men out training to gain experience fighting against monsters. Kazuki notes how he had learnt that the Demon King's armies will invade soon, but Siglas tells Kazuki that the arrival of the heroes have given the human knights more confidence to fight for their kingdom. Knowing that he needs to get stronger, Kazuki and the others suddenly spot a pack of hang wolves, all readying their blades. Back with Yusato and Suzume, Suzume states that she'll be next after Kazuki finishes training, but Suzume gets pouty when Yusato doesn't seem to be worried for her. As Yusato wishes Suzume the best during her training, he begins making his way home, passing through the town as the sunset. As Yusato puts Blurin to sleep, he spots Rose staring at the moon, heading over to have a chat. Reporting that he is indeed terrified of dying, Yusato states that he does at least have the courage to fight in the front lines, if it means he'll get to save Kazuki, Suzume and the other men that are placing their lives on the line to protect them. Happy to hear that Yusato is growing even stronger, Rose bumps Yusato in the chest, reminding Yusato that their sole role is to save and rescue people. As the next day rolls around, Rose wakes Yusato from his sleep revealing that the king wants Yusato to join Suzume in order to gain actual battle experience. Heading into town with Rose and Blurin, Yusato learns that the king wanted Yusato to go with Kazuki, but Rose had asked against it, as Yusato had only recently returned from the forest. Rose adds that Yusato only needs to follow and heal any injured, and that the training will be over in three days. As Yusato meets up with Suzume and her party, Suzume utters that she didn't expect to be seeing Yusato and Blurin so soon, teasing Yusato for wanting to see her so much. When Yusato doesn't play along, Suzume introduces her party members, Uruku the knight and Korin the mage. Recognizing Uruku as one of the guards for the palace, Rose suddenly interrupts filling Suzume in on Yusato's potential. Rose states that Yusato is only capable of healing wounds and poison, but cannot bring anyone back from the dead. Seeing Rose's serious tone, Suzume states she'll keep that thought in mind, but Rose states that since Siglas trained her, Rose trusts that Suzume is competent. Turning to Yusato, Rose only stares at Yusato, heading off and wishing everyone the best, but as Rose leaves, Suzume notes how she can sense immense power from Rose. Cutting to Kazuki, we see that he has returned from his forest training, already beginning to practice his swordplay, but is suddenly interrupted by Princess Celia. Celia scolds Kazuki for pushing himself too hard, worried that he's overdoing his training, but Kazuki reassures the princess that he is fine, making her blush and run off. As Yusato follows Suzume and her party to the dark forest of Linger, Yusato learns that Kazuki was quite tired after his training, but was happy with his results in the forest. Seeing as he's heading back into the forest where Blurin was raised, Yusato wonders if Blurin misses his home, but suddenly Suzume asks if Blurin is asleep. Suzume notes how this is her perfect opportunity to pet and cuddly Blurin, but seeing Suzume acting creepy, Yusato stops Suzume from touching Blurin. With all the noise, Yusato greets Blurin, who has finally awoken, forced to walk along with everyone now that he's barely awake. Coming up with an idea, Suzume offers to carry Blurin, but when Blurin hops on her back, Suzume immediately gets crushed by Blurin's weight. Apologizing for not thinking, Suzume thanks Yusato for healing her, but suddenly Korin detects several entities nearby, but as everyone readies their weapons, they realize that the entities are bandits. Checking out the members of Yusato's party, the bandits get cocky, 
demanding that Usato and his members hand over all their loot, but the bandits get terrified spotting Blurin with them. With the bandits realizing that Blurin is only a cub, they state that they will slay and skin Blurin, but this triggers Suzume, instantly casting a lighting spell that paralyzes one of the bandits. Amazed at Suzume's control of lightning magic, Yusato cheers Suzume on, prompting the bandits to rush in close, but as Uruku helps fend off the bandits, Korin senses more approaching enemies. Out of nowhere a horde of fall boars swarm the area, all running through the bandits and making their way towards Yusato. Seeing Yusato in danger, Blurin steps in the way, redirecting the boars, but when Yusato sees Suzume about to be run over, he dashes to her side, cradling her as they are both knocked into the air. Realizing that they are flying through the air, Yusato cradles Suzume tight, fortifying his body with healing magic, as they begin plummeting through the forest, ultimately falling into a river. Realizing that the river leads to a waterfall, the same one he used to escape from the grizzlies, Yusato instructs Suzume to hold her breath, both plummeting down the waterfall. Having been knocked out, Yusato manages to wake up, hearing Suzume call out to him. Spotting Suzume clinging to him, Yusato notes how embarrassing the situation is, prompting Suzume to push Yusato aside. Seeing a cut on Suzume, Yusato heals Suzume's wound, revealing that he has been in this forest before, so they must be careful as there are monsters littered across the forest. Checking out their supplies, Yusato is worried they don't have food, but reasons that they should at least set up camp and rest for the day as it'll get dark soon. Spotting a nearby cave, Yusato reasons that they should set up camp there but first they need to change out of their wet clothes. Next, Yusato asks Suzume to hunt for some fish, making use of her electric magic to paralyze some fish in the river. Yusato then asks Suzume to light a fire with her electric magic, so grateful that Suzume is here with him, as they can now cook the fish and dry off their wet clothes. With both Yusato and Suzume embarrassed to face each other, Suzume peeks at Yusato's ripped body but suddenly spots some creatures appear from the darkness. Yusato states that the creatures are venom monkeys, having read about them, warning Suzume to not let them bite her as she'll be poisoned. Ignoring Yusato's warning, Suzume can't help but allow the adorable creatures nibble on her finger, but suddenly Suzume collapses, forcing Yusato be begin healing her. Back at the palace, the king notifies Kazuki that Yusato and Suzume are missing prompting Kazuki to state that he'll personally search for them himself. Intervening, Rose stops Kazuki, stating that they have nothing to worry about, as Yusato is someone that she personally trained to be resilient in any situation, coupled with the hero Suzume, Rose has no doubts that they'll be fine. As it's already getting late, Yusato states that they should take turns sleeping, offering Suzume to sleep first, but Suzume states that since Yusato used so much magic healing her, he should sleep first. As it begins to rain outside their cave, Suzume has a grim look on her face, asking Yusato if he's asleep. Yusato reveals that he is, prompting Suzume to ask how Yusato feels about living in this world and whether he wants to go back home. Yusato mentions that he is of course going home, but he also has found reasons to stay and reside in this world. Suzume reveals that she personally doesn't want to go back home, stating that unlike her previous life, she doesn't have any expectations holding her back, guilty as she doesn't want Yusato to suffer because of her selfishness. Happy to hear Suzume's true feelings, Yusato reveals that he and Suzume are quite similar, as he too didn't enjoy being mediocre. But ever since he came to this world, he discovered a new purpose, a goal to help protect Suzume, Kazuki and all the humans of the kingdom. Happy to hear Yusato is holding up okay, Suzume states that she's happy Yusato and her are growing closer flustering Yusato as he quickly heads to bed, all whilst Suzume teases Yusato's adorable reaction. The next morning, Yusato begins retracing his steps, slowly attempting to find the exit to the forest, but suddenly they both hear some rustling nearby. As they both prepare to attack, Yusato suddenly spots Blurin, giving him a massive hug, spotting Uruku close behind. As Yusato heals Uruku, Uruku states that he had chased after Blurin, who had suddenly run off into the forest. Seeing Blurin act strange, Yusato reveals that they are currently at Blurin's old home, where his parents were slain, feeling bad and offering Blurin to remain here where his home is. Surprisingly, Blurin refuses, choosing to stay with Yusato, only to begin to guide everyone out of the forest.
With Yusato and Suzume returning to report their return to the king, the king apologizes to Yusato for getting him roped up in this hero stuff, but Yusato reassures the king that he's understanding of the situation. As the king asks about Yusato's training with Rose, Yusato notices Rose glaring at him, forcing him to reply that it's going well and he's enjoying it, but secretly Yusato notes how he's been conditioned by Rose to talk highly of her. As Yusato and Suzume are dismissed, prompting Sergio, the king's assistant asks to speak with Rose and Siglas privately. Heading out of the throne room, Yusato tells Suzume that everyone seemed quite tense, jokingly wondering if they would get fired, but just then they hear Kazuki call out to them. With Kazuki running up to them and Celia close behind, Kazuki voices how worried he was for the two, asking Yusato and Suzume to not be so reckless and nonchalant. Celia mentions how Kazuki was ready to search for them when they heard Yusato and Suzume were attacked and lost in a forest, which Suzume reassures Kazuki that they were fine. Yusato mentions how Suzume was recklessly petting a poisonous monkey, but Suzume silences Yusato, shaking Yusato to stop him from embarrassing her. Heading outside, Kazuki adds that it was Rose that stopped him from searching for Yusato and Suzume, amazed that Rose had so much faith in Yusato. As the three joke around, Princess Celia is happy to see everyone so close, but ultimately Suzume and Yusato part ways with Kazuki and Celia. Now alone, Celia notes how happy Kazuki is when he's with Yusato and Suzume, wondering if she too can be friends with Kazuki, flustering Kazuki as he shyly states he's happy to be Celia's friend. Back with the king, he reveals that he has managed to capture and interrogate the bandits that attacked Yusato and Suzume, learning that the bandits whilst exploring the forest had noticed fewer monsters than usual. This makes the king believe that the monsters are fleeing from the forest, meaning that the demon king's army is slowly approaching. With Siglas knowing that the demon king's army will be stronger than before, Siglas rushes to prepare his men to prepare for war all whilst Sergio goes to inform the other ministers in the palace. With only Rose and the king, the king asks Rose to scout the demon king's army, apologizing for the dangerous work, but Rose accepts knowing that she is the fastest in the kingdom. Before Rose leaves, the king gets up from his throne, asking if Rose would ever return to the position of battalion commander. As Rose refuses, the king gets serious, demanding to know why Rose hasn't gotten over the past, but Rose reminds the king that she feels immense guilt knowing that she was responsible for the deaths of all her previous subordinates. Ever since then, she knew the value of one's life, knowing that no amount of healing can bring back the dead, and her marking on her right eye is a reminder of her failures. Rose states that she has created the rescue squad to focus on saving lives, which the king acknowledges has saved hundreds during the war two years ago, but Rose adds that she wants to find an immortal being. With the king shocked to hear this, Rose mentions how a person that is able to push their body's limits with healing magic and a person that will never give up will have the makings of an immortal soldier, and Rose believes that Yusato is the perfect fit for that person. Hearing this, the king is reminded of several cheeky men that are no longer with them, but cutting the conversation short, Rose apologizes, beginning to head towards the kingdom's border to scope out the demons. That night, Yusato hears that Rose left a letter for him, telling Yusato that there is no training tomorrow but instead wants Yusato to deliver a letter to someone. Cutting to Amelia, she continues to order her demon army to continue building a bridge, but seeing Amelia so fired up, the Dark Knight asks Amelia to relax a bit. Annoyed, Amelia orders the Dark Knight that she is his superior, but the Dark Knight reminds Amelia that they were the same rank not too long ago. Not wanting to be bossed around, the Dark Knight leaves, asking Amelia to call when the bridge is finished. Just then Hyrulic appears, asking if he can help, but Amelia states that they'll be able to finish the bridge within a few hours and their siege on the Linger Kingdom will begin. Just then, Amelia hears they have spotted a scout nearby, giggling as Amelia knows that by the time the scout reports the progress of their bridge to the king, the demons will have already invaded. Out of nowhere, a huge tree trunk smashes into the bridge, instantly collapsing it, which Amelia realizes that the scout can only be Rose, remembering back when Rose's eye was heavily injured. As Rose runs off, she notes how the demons are progressing faster than expected, but at least by destroying the bridge they have some extra time to prepare. The next day, Yusato walks through town, trying to deliver Rose's envelope, but gets a little lost, spotting several townsfolk watching him. Stopping by the older lady's fruit stand, 
The lady remarks how Blurin isn't with Yusato, but Yusato asks if he can buy a basket of peffles, asking to pick them up later, but as Yusato leaves Amako is seen spying on him. Finally making it to his destination, Yusato runs into Uruuru, which Uruuru recognizes having heard about Yusato from Fleur. Uruuru welcomes Yusato to their clinic, learning that Yusato is 17 years old, making her a year older, but asks if Yusato would like to see Fleur examining a patient. With Yusato and Uruuru peeking in on Fleur's examination, Yusato is amazed at how dense and smooth Fleur's healing magic is, able to instantly heal a sick boy. Upon spotting Yusato, Fleur thanks Yusato for delivering a message from Rose, as Yusato catches Uruuru up on the other guys and Rose, Fleur is seen reading the letter, slowly getting more and more worried, only to swiftly put on a smile, hiding the letter. Uruuru goes on to reveal that herself and Fleur were the very first healers Rose took on, after creating the rescue squad, but sadly both Fleur and Uruuru couldn't keep up with Rose's training, always scared of her, but Uruuru felt like Rose was desperate. Luckily, ever since Yusato came, Rose seems to be more happy, but just then a man calls out for Fleur, informing him that three people have been injured. With Yusato, Uruuru and Fleur rushing to the scene, Yusato spots Fleur exhausted from running, but each person rushes to one of three injured. Seeing the man severely injured, Yusato gets worried that he can't heal such a severe wound, but Fleur instructs Yusato to calm his mind, allowing Yusato to easily heal any wounds on the injured man. Heading back to the clinic, Fleur compliments Yusato's quick learning pace, asking if Yusato will stop by more often and help out. With Yusato heading off, Fleur reveals that the letter is notifying them that they have been summoned for war, and that Yusato has no combat experience, meaning it'll be up to them to help instill confidence in Yusato to allow him to grow. As Yusato picks up his fruits from the ladies, he begins snacking on the fruits, spotting Amako running up to him. Asking if the girl is lost, Amako utters that Yusato is the chosen one, projecting a vision of the future into Yusato's head, terrifying him, as he sees Suzume and Kazuki slaughtered, all whilst the little girl runs off. As the vision wraps up, Yusato is completely shaken up, confused as he tries to search for Amako, but Amako is seen hiding and praying that Yusato doesn't ignore her warning. Running through town, Yusato continues to search for Amako, asking a guard on duty, but upon spotting Rose appear, the guard flees. Grabbing Yusato by the face, Rose tells Yusato that she was scouting the demon army, revealing that they have several days left until the demons invade. As Rose and Yusato head back home, Yusato is surprised that Rose had heard about the Beast Girl, learning that the girl had appeared out of nowhere two years ago, believed to have escaped from capture. Apparently, Beast people are quite rare, so they are frequently captured, but seeing Yusato so intrigues, Rose asks what Yusato is thinking. Yusato wonders if the beast people have illusion magic or magic involving visions, but Rose says she's heard of very rare instances where beast people are able to see the future, but these beast people would normally be hidden away. As Rose leaves to report her findings to the king, Yusato is left to head home alone. That night, Rose reports everything regarding the bridge and her delaying the construction of the bridge to the king, who thanks Rose for the valuable information. Seeing as it's almost time, the king says he will announce the news to the citizens tomorrow, asking Chergio and Sigils to make any final preparations, but first they must notify the heroes. With Suzume and Kazuki heading towards the throne room, they both deduce that the Demon King's army must be near, but suddenly they run into Celia. Not wanting to scare the princess, Suzume and Kazuki greet Celia, but Suzume spots Kazuki and Celia acting awkward to each other. Cutting to Yusato, we see him unable to sleep, fearing that the beast girl truly had shown him the future, wondering how he can single-handedly avoid that future. Suddenly, Yusato spots several lights outside his window, realizing it's Kazuki who wants to have a little chat. Apologizing for the late chat, Kazuki reveals that the king had summoned them, informing them that the demon king's army is arriving. Kazuki notes how Suzume was excited, but he himself was terrified, zoning out only to appear in front of Yusato now. Kazuki reveals that during his training in the forest, he was terrified stiff, unable to move and fight until the others stepped. Ashamed to admit it, Kazuki states that he fears he'll die, but he knows that as a hero he must protect the innocent townsfolk who have treated him well. Seeing Kazuki so vulnerable, Yusato has nothing but respect for Kazuki, 
Asking Kazuki to be more selfish sometimes as Kazuki doesn't always have to live up to everyone's expectations. Surprised by Yusato's response, Kazuki asks what Yusato intends to do, hearing that Yusato will go no matter what. Wondering why Yusato is so willingly to risk his life, Yusato calmly expresses how he does feel fear like Kazuki, but since living in this world he's discovered that people like them with the ability to fight should stand up and fight for those who can't. Naturally, Yusato mentions that he intends to help everyone, including Kazuki and Suzume, giving Kazuki enough courage to declare that he'll gladly go to war if it means Yusato and Suzume are with him. With a fist bump, Kazuki heads off, thanking Yusato for clearing up his jumbled mind. Before Yusato leaves, he calls out to Suzume, asking that she is free to go home as well, prompting Suzume to reveal herself. Suzume mentions how she followed Kazuki, fearing what he would do but is happy to see that Yusato was able to clear things up. The next day, we see the king rallying together with his men, declaring that the demon army is arriving soon, so they must be ready for battle. To raise his men's spirits, the king announces that they have both the heroes on their side, along with the rescue team who will take care of the wounded, declaring that they plan to intercept the demons in the grasslands and that they will start moving tomorrow. With a huge roar from the knights, we cut to Kazuki who has come to visit Celia. At first the two are awkward, but as the princess prays for Kazuki's safe return, Kazuki promises to win the war, gallantly heading off. That evening, we see Ururu delighted to meet Blurin, reaching out to pet him, only to be rejected. As Yusato heads elsewhere to help Fleur, Fleur reveals that Ururu is quite nervous explaining her over-energetic self, but just then, Yusato is called to have a private chat with Rose. Upon entering Rose's office, Rose calmly asks to have a chat, asking Yusato if he remembers his role in this war. Yusato states that they'll be in the front, but Rose corrects him, as they'll start near the back and help with healing, as there will be no injuries towards the beginning and they would be easy targets. Getting serious, Rose orders Yusato to be careful the moment they start healing those in the front line, as healers may get in the way of people fighting. Additionally, on the battlefield, everything is quick-paced, so Yusato be careful and precise as allies and enemies are hard to discern at times. As a gift, Rose unveils Yusato's official rescue squad uniform, designed to stand out on purpose. Wearing the uniform, Yusato thanks Rose, but Rose suddenly approaches Yusato reiterating that his life is very valuable, and healers can't heal the dead. Rose continues to state that she's known many cocky healers that have had their lives taken and she also knows someone who regrets not acting quick enough but seeing Rose so serious, Yusato reminds Rose that he won't die so easily. With a fist bump from Rose, Yusato heads out, declaring that he won't let the vision he saw come true, no matter what. The next day, we see Fleur and Ururu sitting among carriages, positioned very far away from the kingdom. Tong reiterates that they are better to stay far away from the actual battlefield when the demons attack, as Ururu and Fleur need to be unharmed when healing. As Rose and Yusato man the carriage, Rose reveals that the demons are technically demi-humans with unique twisted horns on their heads. On top of that, demons will naturally be more physically stronger and have greater mana capacity than humans, and this applies to the demon race as a whole. With Rose checking to see if Yusato is scared, Yusato simply fires back, stating that Rose is clearly scarier than the demons. Rose admits that Yusato has come a long way from the wimpy kid she first met, but Yusato blames Rose for putting him through hell only wanting to prove Rose wrong all along. With Yusato noticing Rose acting differently, we see that Rose is still thinking of her fallen squad members, flashing back to the day that Rose first took the role of the battalion commander for the Linger Knights. The king states that there have been sightings of demons near the grasslands, therefore he intends to have guards positioned near the grasslands in case enemies pass through. With the king leaving the details to the high-ranking officers, the king asks everyone to be careful and or not underestimate the demons, prompting Rose and Siglas to have a chat about the demons' next moves. As Siglas asks for Rose's opinion on the demons' motives, Rose simply tries to brush off the question, but Siglas states that he suspects the demons plan to invade. As Siglas heads off to rally his men, Rose comments that Siglas is way too serious all the time, wondering if she should prepare her squad as well. Just then, a smaller purple girl attempts to keep up with Rose, calling out to Rose, but gets punched for being annoying. As Rose carries on walking, 
The purple-haired girl asks Rose whether the demons would truly invade their kingdom, but Rose punishes her subordinate for eavesdropping on her in Aeschylus conversation. With Rose scolding Owl for not acting her part, the two head back to their base, where Owl confidently proclaims that they'll defeat the demons if the time comes. As Rose asks Owl to not be so cocky, Owl reminds Rose that she has been physically trained by Rose, but this only makes Rose want to punish Owl with some more training. As Owl and Rose return home, they greet the other members of the squad, but Rose breaks the ice by telling everyone she'll be training with them today. Instantly turning to their deputy commander, the members begin demanding to know what Owl said to Rose for such a bad thing to happen. Trying to calm everyone down, Owl says that they should get stronger together, but this isn't enough to stop everyone from punishing Owl. With a week passing, the king is seen having a private chat with Rose, revealing that the demons have begun attacking the monsters around the kingdom using a group of highly skilled demons. Finding it suspicious that the demons are moving so meticulously, the king asks Rose to scout the situation, granting Rose to use any means necessary to return safely. That night, Rose informs her squad that they will be investigating the area of demon sightings, stating that they'll be heading out tomorrow morning. Speaking up, one of the members asks how many enemies are there, prompting Rose to utter that there should be no more than 30 demons. Seeing her party begin to grow worried, Owl tries to cheer everyone up, but this only gets the member to berate Owl for putting them through training with Rose. As Owl and her party fight, Rose is seen ordering her pet Kukuru to remain home, fearing that the demons will want to target Kukuru first. Knowing that everyone is clearly nervous, Rose reveals that she'll personally be joining them, cheering everyone up as Rose is highly skilled in combat and healing. With everyone now prepared, they head through the forest by horseback, traveling all throughout the day, only to stop to set up camp. Having not discovered anything, the members plan to head deeper west tomorrow, but since the area is quite dangerous they must leave their horse behind. With several members worried that they are acting too rashly, Owl gets serious, stating that she senses something west, prompting everyone to trust in Owl and head west the next day. As everyone heads to bed, Owl is seen manning the fire, but Rose orders Owl to rest as well, offering to stand guard first. With several minutes passing, Rose reveals she knows Owl is awake, shocking Owl as Rose's senses are on another level. Sitting beside the fire, Owl asks Rose why she was chosen to become deputy commander, as compared to the others Owl is quite below average. Wondering why Owl is asking these questions now of all time, Owl adds that her role as the deputy commander is to write reports and restock equipment, but Rose states that it is an important role, and Owl seems to be handling the role fine. Still not sure why Rose chose her, Rose mentions how she plans to promote Owl to captain eventually, reminding Owl that since Rose is the battalion leader, Rose can't also be the captain or the heel squad as well. Hearing this, Owl gets scared she won't meet Rose's expectations as a captain, but Rose states that Owl's more capable than she lets on. Owl states that she is quite stubborn, barely able to change her mind once she's decided, but Rose states that she's aware of this. Owl adds that she always fought with her superiors as a junior knight, being very capable of backing up her words, but one day Owl met Rose, completely defeated by Rose. Ever since then, Owl had trained under Rose, completely set on growing stronger to defeat Rose one day. With Rose reminiscing on the times they trained together, Owl states that Rose was the only one that continued to help her, as most of her mentors eventually got tired of Owl's attitude and left her. Owl reveals that Rose was the only one that understood her, therefore Owl refuses to allow anyone else but Rose to be their captain, shocking Rose as she sees Owl's determined face. Having heard enough, Rose flicks Owl for being so serious, reminding Owl that she had carefully selected Owl for a reason. Kneeling next to Owl, Rose states that Owl's ability to charge forward regardless of situation along with skills to back up her decisions, will be the reason people will accept her as the new captain. Seeing Owl all giddy, Rose states that she'll now be heading to sleep, ordering Owl to stand guard now, but first orders the rest of her party to go back to sleep. Shocked, Owl realized that everyone was listening to their conversation, embarrassed as the members began to tease Owl for getting so vulnerable with Rose. As the members head west up a mountain the next day, they stumble onto blood splatters, noting it to be the work of a glow wolf. Confirming that the demons are indeed hunting down monsters, the members wonder if the demons are simply playing around, but they all suddenly hear a loud cry in the distance.
With Rose and her members rushing towards the sound, they spot several demons carrying away several unconscious monsters, but suddenly one of the demons calls for Rose and her members to reveal themselves. With Rose confronting the demon's leader, Rose asks for the reason the demons are capturing monsters, but the leader simply utters that they need the monsters for later. Seeing as there is no need for conflict, Rose orders the demons to leave, but the demons state that Rose and her party will have to die. With Rose locking eyes with the demon's leader, Owl and her members engage the remaining demons, all whilst Rose and the demon leader fight. Seeing the leader cast some wind armor, Rose simply closes the gap, landing several punches, sending the leader flying back. Leaving her members behind, Rose chases the demon leader deeper into the forest, annoyed that the leader is evading her with its wind magic. Having locked down the leader's location, Rose pelts the leader with several tree trunks, stopping the leader in place, but the leader unveils its true form. With Rose dashing forward, Rose attempts to break through the leader's enhanced wind armor, but gets caught by the leader's wind trap, smirking as she nonchalantly walks past the trap, enduring the damage only to instantly heal the damage. Realizing that Rose is a formidable healer, the demon leader introduces himself as Nero Agents, conjuring a powerful blade to fight Rose close quarters. Check out one of our other videos on the screen or in the info card above. Subscribe, like and comment.